Let's learn how to protect ourselves online by utilizing this cybersecurity checklist. In this video, I'm gonna go over the value of a strong password and how to manage passwords. We're gonna talk about how to keep systems and software updated. We're going to discuss how to avoid phishing scams. We're gonna talk about the value of utilizing antivirus software and firewall protection. And we're gonna talk about safe browsing and how to secure your personal information better on the web. First, talk about the value of securing our passwords and password management. I know it can be difficult, but you need to make sure your passwords are as complex as possible. You need a mix of uppercase and lowercase letters, numbers, and special characters. Always consider a statement or a phrase that you know, eventually adding a symbol at the beginning of it or a number at the end or a symbol at the beginning and a number at the end to help you remember it. And please don't use common passwords. Don't use those easily guessable one two three four five six or password those are the first accounts that get hacked this is another difficult one having a different password for different accounts even if you have a hard time with doing it think about doing it for different types of accounts breaking it up not using one password across multiple different types of devices and or types of software this is because if something does have a breach it's going to be like a domino effect with whoever does have your information is going to use it on multiple accounts to gain access. And another tough one, update them regularly. Every couple months, three to six months is probably enough. One of the best ways to track passwords is to use a password manager. There are many different ones available out there. I recommend one that's easy to use, that has an easy to use web interface and a mobile app for your phone. For example, I use Keeper. I like it because it has a mobile app, it has a web interface, and it's very similar across both interfaces. It also makes it easy to change the password and it has its own vault, which requires two thought factor authentication to be able to access. And we'll talk more about two factor authentication. A real world example of issues with passwords, a major data breach at LinkedIn in 2012 exposed millions of weak passwords. So if these passwords were used on other accounts, it exposed those people. That's why it's important to have a strong password and have it for different accounts because it's going to get exposed at one account and whoever has that information may try it on other accounts. Now let's talk about keeping software and systems updated. Regularly update your operating system. I know it's very easy to click off of it when you're just loading up the machine and you want to get started using it and you, it requests you for an update, but please take the time to update it regularly. These updates include important security patches, which help keep your device safe from all sorts of internet issues. Also, update applications and software when they request. Often, one update triggers to another update. So if an operating system updates, often you'll see a piece of software that need to be updated. It's important that you do whatever you can to keep your system up to date when requested. There's a reason for them. This includes browsers, plugins, system. You can also enable automatic updates if it makes it easier. This is a helpful way to make sure that you get the updates you need. Now you can also update firmware on hardware devices. Routers, printers, and other hardware also have firmware that often needs to be updated. Updating this helps keep those devices safe as well. Be aware of it as end of life software often presents a risk as it's no longer being supported or updated. This means that it's no longer getting those important security updates. Now an example of updating devices being important, the WannaCry ransom attack of 2017 exploited this vulnerability in outdated Windows operating systems. It affected hundreds of thousand computers globally. Now let's talk about recognizing and avoiding phishing scams. And I also have to add here that phishing scams are going to be on the rise with additional AI tools that are going to be sending more messages in more sneaky ways. These suspicious emails that are looking to trap and get you to click can be incredibly dangerous. Look for red flags like bad grammar, urgent requests, and senders that you just don't know or are unsure of. And also hovering over the links can help you see what they are and see if they're suspicious. But don't click on them. A link may say one thing, but go somewhere else. Else. By lightly hovering over them, you can see the actual link to the destination, not just what they chose to have as the text that shows. Be careful of verification requests of sensitive information. Never provide personal or financial information through your email or over the phone unless you're certain of the recipient's identity. Be extremely cautious of email attachments. Avoid opening any attachments from unknown senders or even the ones you're unsure of. Be sure to use multi 
two-factor authentication. Two-factor right now is the most common. Two-factor authentication is when a software or resource you're using will send you a link to your phone to confirm a code through your phone or send you an email to your email that it knows on file that you can check to get a code. This adds a layer of security to your accessing anything. If that's possible, use it. If your information is stolen and someone is trying to hack your account, that hack will not be able to get the proper authentication when requested. A real world example of this is in 2020 during the COVID epidemic, there was a surge in phishing attacks. Scammers posted as organizations such as the World Health Organization and tried to trick users into downloading information or providing potential personal information. Now let's talk about the importance of using antivirus and firewall protection. Install reputable antivirus protection on your computer. Use a well-reviewed piece of software to help protect against malware and viruses. Keep your antivirus software's definitions up to date. Unregular system scans. This will help identify and remove any potential threats. Enable a firewall to prevent unauthorized access to your network. Configure your firewall settings. You can get more granular control over your network by the control of your firewall settings. Let's talk about a real world example of how these protections are important. The Equifax data breach in 2017. This was due primarily to the failure of a firewall. Attackers were able to get sensitive information over a series of months. Now let's talk about safe browsing practices and securing your personal information. Use secure websites. HTTPS. The S stands for security when browsing. This is very important when entering personal information into a website. Be sure it is a secure website, which HTTPS. Avoid public Wi-Fi. If you're going to make a sensitive transaction requiring your personal information, money, banking, purchases, don't do it over public Wi-Fi. These Wi-Fi networks are particularly susceptible to attackers and attackers who can take your personal information when using your credentials over them. Delete your browsing data regularly. Delete your cookies, cache, and history to protect your privacy. Use a VPN for added security. A virtual private network encrypts your internet connection, making it harder for hackers to intercept your data. And of course, be cautious with any sensitive personal information that you have on the internet in social networks. Limit the amount of social information you share so that you can reduce your chance at identity theft. A real world example of the value of this is in 2019, users who accessed their bank accounts over a public Wi-Fi without a VPN were targeted by cyber criminals using something called man in the middle attacks. This led to unauthorized withdrawals and compromised personal information. So just to provide some valuable data around the value of these potential areas of cybersecurity protection that you need to have in place, let's supply you with some data. Password security breaches. 81% of data breaches are caused by weak or reused passwords. In terms of software vulnerabilities, 60% of vulnerabilities for which a patch was available but not used, 96% of phishing attacks arrive via email, and one in 99 emails is a phishing attack. Now in terms of antivirus and software protection, antivirus software detects and blocks 75% of new threats on average, but regular updates crucial for maintaining this efficacy. Now let's talk about safe browsing. As of 2023, 95% of all web traffic on Google Chrome is encrypted using HTTPS to ensure safer browsing. So that does help. So you just need to make sure you are utilizing HTTPS. Cybersecurity is crucial to protecting your personal and professional data in the digital age. This is a basic cybersecurity checklist to help you get started and consider how you are sharing, browsing, and surfing the web. And if you're doing it safely with devices that are updated with patches on networks that are secure. A tip of coaching advice here, make sure that you check a cybersecurity checklist like this often. You update passwords, you update your profiles, check on personal information, and consider using a password manager and other ways of monitoring your online identity. Also use two-factor authentication on all devices and banking accounts and other apps that allow for that technology. Let's stay safe online. Start with these simple steps and continue to learn. Thanks for visiting Digital Futures Education. Hope you liked the video. Please like and subscribe. Look forward to seeing you soon.